Welcome everybody to the Mayo Media Network. My name is Nick Giffen of Fantasy Labs. You can find me on Twitter at Rotodoc. And today we are going to talk NASCAR at Phoenix for the Instacart 500. Phoenix is a one mile flat track. There's going to be 312 laps for uh, the race this weekend. That means we are going to need to put Dominators in our DraftKings lineup. Of course, again, for those of you who may have missed it, Dominators are those drivers that lead the laps and get the fastest laps. That's going to be very important to our scoring. However, we also want to make sure we fill up, fill out our lineup with a combination of drivers that give us good place differential, which means moving from the back to the front, uh, and then also good finishing position, and of course, adjusting that for their price point. So, Phoenix, as I mentioned, is a one mile flat track. They're using the 750 horsepower package low down for us. This is the same configuration they used last year. Uh, in 2019, they used a higher down force package, so we're not really gonna look at 2019 data. But back in 2018, they also used a lower down force uh, setting there. So, we can use data from 2018, 17, and even 16 if we need to for Phoenix. Uh, in addition to Phoenix, it is a one mile flat track, like I said. Richmond is the closest comparable track. It is a 0.75 mile flat track with a similar shape to Phoenix. And then also New Hampshire is a one mile flat track like Phoenix. A little bit different shape, a little bit flatter as well, but those are the two closest comparable tracks if we wanna be able to expand our sample size. NASCAR is also making sure that the cup cars this weekend use the same tire combination as last year, as well as the track compound, the traction compound that is going to be used at Phoenix. So definitely last year's data is going to be very relevant. So let's get into our picks. I'm going to be talking cash games, tournaments, going to give you all a fade, and we're going to talk about one bet for the race. So my cash game pick, this driver is Eric Almarola. He is $9,000 on DraftKings, and he will start in the 32nd position for this weekend's race. That 32nd position, starting position, is very important because that is going to give him a lot of place differential potential. You know, if he finishes, let's say, 12th, that 32 minus 12 is 20 place differential points right there. Plus, he'll get points for finishing in 12th place. So, Eric Almarola, a very good pick this weekend. Flat tracks are indeed his best type. He has three top eight finishes in the last four low down force races at Phoenix, and that's since he's been with his current team, Stuart Haas Racing, which he joined in 2018. So three top eight finishes in four races at Phoenix. Very good for Eric Almarola. If we look at the corollary tracks, New Hampshire, uh, he's got a third and a seventh with low down force settings at his current team. And he has one top five in two Richmond races with his current team under low down force settings. So just an amazing, amazing driver under low down force at flat tracks with his current team. I know Stuart Haas Racing has struggled to beginning to, at the beginning of the year. Uh, however, the struggles have come at two one and a half mile tracks that are higher banked, that are using the low horsepower package in the high downforce package. All of that is opposite to what we're going to be seeing at Phoenix this weekend. So I wouldn't put too much weight on the struggles of Stuart Haas racing in those last two one and a half mile tracks. My model gives Almirola the fifth highest median points per dollar and the second highest points per dollar without the risk of starting inside the top 12. So if you remove drivers starting inside the top 12, Eric Almirola is second highest in my model in terms of median points per dollar. So Eric Almirola, very great play this weekend for your cash game lineups. I would definitely stick him in there for $9,000 and that still leaves you room to put in a dominator potentially in your cash game lineups and a bunch of place differential opportunity with some medium and lower price drivers as well. Let's move on to tournaments. The driver I absolutely have to mention here is Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott starts sixth on Sunday. He's priced at $11,500 on DraftKings. What else is there to say? He is the defending champion of the whole series, and that is because he won the last race last year at Phoenix. Not only did he win it, he dominated it. And he has been dominant at Phoenix in general. 2016 was Chase's first full-time season. 2016, 17, and 18, I mentioned, were low down four seasons, along with 2020. In every single one of those eight races uh, uh, from those four years, Chase Elliott has had a driver rating over 100. That is fantastic. Over 100 is a very important threshold to get 
He has had a driver rating over 100 in all eight of those races. The two races in 2019 where there was higher downforce at Phoenix, he had driver ratings under 100. So definitely under low downforce settings, Chase Elliott is amazing at Phoenix. My model gives him the highest average finish. It gives him the highest DraftKings median points and the highest DraftKings ceiling points. So Chase Elliott is absolutely a driver you want to build around this weekend in tournaments. The one thing I will say is everybody knows that he is going to be pretty chalky, uh, but I do still think he is absolutely the best driver to be using in this situation. Priced, of course, quite high, but I'd much rather use him than somebody like Kevin Harvick, who's priced even higher and has less dominator potential. So Chase Elliott is the driver you should be leading off a lot of your lineups with, but uh, don't go crazy because there are certainly a lot of drivers that are capable of dominating and winning. I mean, other drivers we can include are Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, just to name a few. Those are the top five in my model this weekend. Uh, so Chase Elliott, of course, being the top of those five, but uh, there are certainly other drivers you're going to want to get exposure to that have dominator potential starting kind of forward. Uh, and of course, we can never count out Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch at this track as well. But let's build around Chase Elliott this weekend for tournaments. One driver we should be fading this weekend is a driver I've talked about in uh, past couple shows here, but instead I've been talking about him on the good side. Now we're going to be talking about him on the negative side, and that is Eric Jones. Eric Jones priced at $7,000 on DraftKings. He starts 14th. That's a little too far forward for me for a couple reasons. First, Eric Jones has only had one finish better than sixth at Phoenix, uh, and that was while he was with Joe Gibbs Racing, which is one of the top, top, most premier equipment teams that he could be driving for. So only one finish inside the top six at Phoenix. Now he's downgraded to Richard Petty Motorsports, and there has been a little bit of a struggle at the beginning of the year. Um, he did have a good race last weekend, but... Uh, it definitely is a downgrade in equipment, and Phoenix isn't necessarily one of his best tracks. He has an average finish of around 15.5, so uh, the fact that he's starting 14th and had an average finish of 15.5 in very good equipment makes me really worried what his average finish might be in worse equipment, so we're looking at the potential for negative place differential for Eric Jones this weekend, and if we don't count the drivers starting 5400 or that are $5,400 and less on DraftKings, which are the very, very back markers that we use very little of anyway. Eric Jones actually has the lowest ceiling in terms of points per dollar per my model this weekend. So fading Eric Jones this weekend, despite having tried to use him a couple weekends ago at Homestead. My favorite bet this weekend is a driver that may surprise you. It is Kurt Busch, and I like his odds to finish in the top 10. Right now on DraftKings, he's being listed at plus 105 to finish in the top 10. But Phoenix, pretty good track for Kurt Busch. In nine of the last 16 races, he has finished inside the top 10. And additionally, if we look at the last eight low downforce races, he's finished in the top 10 half the time, 50% of the time. So that plus 105 certainly uh, is, is good value there. Additionally, it probably would have been five out of the last eight low downforce races Kurt Busch finished in the top 10. And that's because there was one race he was leading he led 52 laps. He had 54 fastest laps. He was driving really well. He was in second place on a very late restart. And Denny Hamlin moved up the track and crashed and put Kurt Busch into the wall. It was not Kurt Busch's fault. Likely would have been five of the last eight low down force races that Kurt Busch finished inside the top 10. So uh, even in that race where he crashed out, he still had a driver rating over 100. I mentioned that 100 threshold a little bit earlier with Chase Elliott. Kurt Busch had a driver rating over 100 in a race where he finished in the 30s. So, you know, that is putting some context to some of these numbers as well. So, Kurt Busch definitely has the numbers just overall at Phoenix. Uh, when we take the last 16 races and also when we take the last eight races at just the low down force Phoenix races, Kurt Busch should be favored to finish inside the top 10. My model barely gives him an average finish inside the top 10 as well, 9.8. So there is some value here for Kurt Busch. Um, certainly it's not a slam dunk, but we're looking for value wherever we can get it. Kurt Busch plus 105 to finish inside the top 10 is my bet of the week. 
that's going to do it here today. Thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic race. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win the race. Who are your favorite DraftKings plays? What are your favorite bets? Make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And everybody, have a great weekend. Once again, I'm Nick Giffen for Fantasy Labs. Follow me on Twitter at Rotodoc. Good luck, everybody.